guys ready? Okay, welcome to this uh, special meeting of council, uh, and it's called for the following matters. Uh, appointment of the additional regional councillor to the Region Appeal Council for the term of 2018-2022. The appointment of the alternate regional councillor in the event of a temporary absence of the Brampton Regional Councillor at the Region Appeal Council for the term of 2018-2022. And also, uh, 2018 to 2022 City Council Governance Proposed Committee Structure and Appointments. Under the Council Meeting Rules, no other business can be considered at this special meeting we are having today. All members of Council are present today. I remind everyone at today's meeting to please ensure all cell phones and other electronic devices are turned off or placed on non-audible mode during the meeting. Council members are reminded to please refrain from sending texts or emails during the meeting. Before we uh, begin uh, today's special meeting, I would like to acknowledge we have in the audience today uh, Stephen uh, Shipper, who has just been announced as the city's new executive artistic director uh, performing and performing arts, where he will oversee the performing arts division, including the Rose Theatre, uh, a keystone of Brampton's vibrant and diverse cultural community. Stephen will officially join the Rose on June 1st, 2019. Following a long-standing and celebrated 30 years at the helm of the Royal Manitoba Theatre Centre, Stephen is a nationally recognized is nationally recognized in the Canadian theatre field, having been awarded the Order of Canada in 2012. Uh, as a city, we are excited to welcome uh, Stephen and look forward to his strategic guidance and depth of experience toward building a legacy for our arts and cultural venues, including the Rose, Lester B. Pearson, Cyril Clark and Garden Square, and the city's cultural landscape at large. And so, Stephen, we're excited to work with you. Uh, we know you have you have a busy schedule, but thank you for coming today um, to be recognized before uh, council. So, uh, first matter of business, we have a motion um, moved by uh, Councillor um, Vicente, seconded by Councillor Singh that the agenda for the special council meeting of December 4th, 2018 be approved as published and circulated. All, All in favor of the motion? All opposed? Motion carries. Number two, do any members uh, have a declaration of pecuniary uh, interest under the Municipal of Conflict of Interest Act for any matter to be considered on today's agenda? Okay, seeing none. The clerk will so note in the minutes. Third item, delegations. Uh, we have uh, we have a, a delegation request right here. Um, the following was received by the city clerk's office after the agenda was printed and relates to a published item on the agenda. Uh, delegations from uh, Vision Brampton regarding item 4.3. Uh, we have uh, delegations from Sundeep Hands, Shailen uh, Narotam, and Leah Rowlandson. Uh, would uh, Council wish to uh, hear those uh, delegations, uh, or would you like to uh, address the uh, additional Council item first? Consensus to hear the delegations? Okay. Seeing a consensus? So can we uh, hear from uh, Sandeep uh, Hands? Hello, good afternoon and thank you so much. Um, so my name is Sandeep. My name is Victoria Wright. My name is Shailen Narotam. Uh, and we together with the founder of director, uh, founder and our executive director, Marilyn Burgess, uh, who could not be here today, have been involved in the formation of a new rapidly growing community collective of young citizens in this uh, in this city called Vision Brampton. We're a not-for-profit, non-partisan advocacy organization that is run entirely by young people from Brampton. Some of our members, as I said, have joined me today. Uh, many of you have already heard from us during um, the campaign period as we mobilize first-time municipal voters across the city to consider the importance of equity, diversity, and inclusion for our communi communities here in Brampton and to vote with those issues in mind. Uh, Vision Brampton was formed for a simple reason, to work collaboratively to build a Brampton for all people. Uh, but as we know, the working of building a Brampton for all is not simple. Uh, of the three main objectives of our organization, the first and foremost is to advocate for a city and leadership that, is deeply, that deeply understands and actively prioritizes equity, diversity, and inclusion. 
uh, a city where leaders are in touch with um, the lived experiences of the people they represent. This is the cornerstone of our work, and we believe that this is the first step toward our other two goals, which is uh, inclusive civic engagement uh, of all Bramptonians in our local democracy and building pride and, and a feeling of belonging in Brampton. Uh, so the core leadership of Vision Brampton are young professionals who work study and volunteer countless hours of community service towards equity, diversity and inclusion for our city and communities. We understand that today there will be a decision on the continuation of the inclusion and equity committee of the city and that the committee may be discontinued on the grounds that it has fulfilled its mandate. We are grateful for the community leaders who have devoted their time and service to this committee, but we are here today to respectfully advocate that the work of equity is never and can never be completed. It is a reflexive and continuous process, one that every new council must take up to ensure that every Bramptonian is fully included in all of our amazing city has to offer. We're very glad to have learned recently that the city has, a develop, has developed a new diversity and inclusion portfolio uh, into a chief administrative uh, administrative's office. Uh, this, is, this role we have also advocated for, are all in support of and look forward to working with. At the same time, the core leadership of Vision Brampton are young professionals who actually work in the DEI space, so diversity, equity, inclusion space. And, um, and also, as and all of us know, a commitment to meaningfully and systemically implementing equity requires a diversity of voices and lived experiences of the citizens themselves. We understand that the mandates for ad hoc committees may be reconsidered given pending council decisions and the priorities you are all setting for our new terms. On behalf of Vision Brampton's leadership and the countless young people that have come together toward the future we envision for our city, we are here today to urge council to reinstate the Inclusion and Equity Committee of Council and re-invite citizen participation toward building a Brampton for all. And thank you. I, we, have, we may have a, a hold on one second. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> this yeah. is my first time. Yeah. Uh, we have a, uh, we have uh, <laughs> Council Medeiros. Uh, thank you, uh, through the mayor. Uh, thank you very much for your delegation. Um, having been an active member of uh, the Diversity and Inclusion Committee and someone who's been very involved in, in, uh, in previous experiences, I think one of the challenges that I noticed as being a member was its effectiveness of the committee. As you know, diversity and inclusion is a really wide-ranging issue. It touches all aspects. And one of the frustrations that I not only felt personally, but I, I felt that members felt was um, there's a lot of discussion, but then after that impact, um, I won't speak to staff and I'll wait for a report to come, but from yourself or from the organization, what, where would you want to focus when we talk about diversity and inclusion over the next four years? What would you want to tackle? The next, oh, we are a city of 75% racialized, uh, racialized people. Outreach is important. Going into these communities and understanding what the community's issues are, speaking to the community. As young people, one of the big things that we had noticed when we first started this work was, um, I don't want to say a lack of openness, that's not it. It's just a lack of awareness of the processes of how we can more engage with the city, uh, city council and how city council can more engage with us. Having open sessions where we can come and speak about issues of equity, speak about I issues of inclusion and diversity, bring those forward. We didn't have an understanding of that. Uh, more and more people we spoke to uh, in the hundreds uh, in, in the city, that was a, a common concern. Um, and, and having that uh, equity, having a committee at least, seeing what it was mandated to do, and what it's now being proposed that you know all everything that was mandated has been accomplished diversity yes but equity is a whole other other piece and i think there's just an overall lack of a capacity for understanding of equity and inclusion across the board yeah and, and so through building that capacity through, through the mayor and i appreciate your comments um equity as you know has part legislative so there's the government's role in, in terms of equity um and then some of the other aspects when we talk about equity um, internally, uh, we have HR policies and so on and so on. Um, so what I'm hearing again through the mayor, uh, and this is kind of, and I will wait for the report and, and, and see what my colleagues bring forward, is the effectiveness because, again, when you have, you do provide that space for discussion, but then after there has to be what is sort of, uh, uh, what is the takeaway? What is, uh, uh, how are we pushing diversity and inclusion forward? Right. And I think that articulation 
Uh, and that's what we found at the committee. I'm not saying who knows what's going to happen later uh, today when we bring the report. Right. Um, but uh, I think that's always been sort of our, our sort of frustration. And how do we show that effectiveness in, in promoting diversity and inclusion? Because it means everything to everyone. And all of us here today, especially in a city like Brampton, have done our outreach with different groups. Uh, but uh, point well taken, and, and it's great that uh, uh, a youth organization has come forward to uh, want to uh, uh, make their stamp and ensure that there's a public space in that engagement with the city. So I thank you very much, and I look forward to when the report comes forward. And, and just to, to answer that a little bit more, the diversity and inclusion portfolio um, in the chief administrative's office, I think, is a step in the right direction because of where it sits. And, and the oversight that it will have. And I think uh, the impact it will have for the Equity and uh, Inclusion Committee going forward, or just Equity, Inclusion, and Diversity here in the city, city hall, the, the bureaucracy side of it, and just the city as a whole, I think um, it's, it's a positive outlook. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Uh, Councillor uh, Dillon? Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, if I could ask, um, so just actually first before that, I was a member of the committee as well. Um, and I felt like there were some, um, there's many good points to it, there's many points of improvement uh, as well, and uh, I think it might be beneficial uh, for uh, us to have a voice for people going forward um, if we can have a more narrow focus. Um, but if I could ask uh, through the mayor, to uh, the CAO, um, when we talk about achieving our uh, priorities. Can you just briefly explain what we what we accomplished? Thank you, Mayor. Um, to Councillor Dillon, I just wanted to say that a few things, if that's okay, Councillor Dillon. Yeah, yeah. Councillor Dillon and Councillor Medeiros were <coughs> on the uh, on the committee in the past, and I wanted to be clear that in no way did we say we're going to stop working on on this. In fact, um, the committee in the end felt that a, a committee structure, a formal committee structure, doesn't get a lot done. And they were very pleased that at least the council in the past had said, okay, we're going to hire an individual in the CAO's office, a dedicated individual. We're working on training of all our leadership team on understanding how to support the 75% of mm -hmm. racialized community. Mm -hmm. We're also doing surveys of all of our staff to, you know, to see if they're going to self-nominate, self-select, and, and show the organization where we need to move. Because we do, need, we do have work to do. But the main thing um, was also how we're doing our outreach has really improved in the 2040 vision. There was a number of initiatives that were completed. But what we said is we would rather work directly with um, a group like yours to actually accomplish things, to actually be more action oriented. Because in a formal committee structure, you have to have quorum, you have to have minutes, you have to have clerical staff. And in no way did, did I think this council or the past council say it's finished. In fact, what we said is let's do more actionable items, that council make this a priority in their 20 to 18 to 22 vision, uh, what they want to achieve, and that we'd work with organizations like the 20, this, this group and actually develop some action items we can present back to council. So it was in no way stopping anything, and that's why we've recommended that we work to more of an action-oriented work plan approach to getting things done. But a group like yours, we'd love to work with from the CAO's office. We'd work with you weekly, you know, on, on moving and advancing your file. But it isn't, there's sort of a myth that a lot gets done through a formal committee structure. So to the, to the mayor, um, just very quickly to uh, uh, Mr. Schlang as well. When can we expect uh, the action um, items? Sorry, um, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we're at hearing delegations now. And the, the purpose is to ask questions of the delegation and then to receive the delegation. For if the, council wants to get into right. a debate to ask questions of staff, um, then we should be doing, dealing with that after we hear from the delegations and the delegation just, can be received. Just for the purpose of um, the delegation having information, I just want to ask uh, um, to, the, to, the, to the mayor, to uh, the CAO, when we can expect these action items to be presented to council. Can I, can I answer that? <laughs> Through you, uh, Mayor, uh, again, uh, the council is going to make this a priority. We've already continued the work, and we would probably come back in probably no later than February with some actions. But love to work with organizations like this, and that's what we said at the last council meeting, is let's, let's get a few key community leaders like, like what we have here in this room to, to drive forward initiatives. So um, just one question uh, further through the Mayor to uh, the delegation. Um, can you 
specifically? I know you mentioned some uh, things you'd like to spe see, but uh, are there specific things uh, uh, at City Hall uh, you'd like to see accomplished? We had three, um, or uh, uh, three big objectives uh, when we had uh, spoken to some of the uh, candidates uh, <coughs> during election time, and, and our big three. Just give me one second for them. We had asked um, the candidates to pledge this. So committed to establishing a Young Citizens Advisory Committee of Council that gives youth access to the spaces of decision making in Brampton and meaningfully includes our voices. We'd ask for creating an official portfolio for equity, diversity, and inclusion at the City of Brampton that will engage with council, city staff, committees, communities, and citizens. Um, and making yourselves more accessible to the work with to work with Vision Brampton and other citizen groups to engage everyday Bramptonians regularly, whether this is online, whether it's in person, um, so that we're all included in the civic process. So thank you so much. And I think when, uh, and I'm hopeful that uh, uh, when we do come back, uh, with some of those action items even before that as the CEO mentioned uh, they're looking forward to working with groups like yours and I guess to achieve those I guess when we have those discussions those uh, we can speak about those with you guys then thank Does you that sound okay that sounds great thank All you right. thank you okay As seeing no other uh, questions thank you for the delegation uh, we have a motion a motion from Councillor uh, Santo seconded by Councillor Pileshi, that the following delegation from Vision Brampton to the special council meeting of December 4th, 2018, in regards to item 4.3, the City Council Governance Proposed Committee Structure and Appointments be received. Uh, um, all in favor? Motion is carried. Uh, we have a presentation, uh, item 3.1. Uh, regarding appoint the appointment process for the additional regional councillor, Peter Fay, our city clerk, is here to provide council with an overview of the appointment process, after which we'll consider the related staff report, item 4.1, and begin the selection process. Uh, welcome, uh, Peter. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, members of, of council. Uh, I'm quickly going to go through a presentation to outline the selection process for the additional regional council. This is item 4.1 on today's agenda and the presentation slides I'm quickly going to go through are really a recap of what's in Appendix 1 to that report which is an excerpt from Council's Procedure Bylaw which says this shall be the selection process for the additional Regional Councillor. So very quickly, um, the general rules as we go through the selection process, all members present shall be permitted to vote. Uh, any member who abstains from voting during the selection process uh, in any round shall not be permitted to vote in any subsequent rounds. Um, candidates do not need to be present to stand for appointment. Uh, candidates may withdraw from any of the sta from standing for appointment after any vote. And again, just to recap, there are only five members of council, the five city councillors that can, that can stand for appointment for this additional regional councillor. The procedures, and I'll go through it, it's, it's ten basic points. Uh, the first is that the clerks will all call for nominations once the selection process gets underway. Um, members can self-nominate themselves or a member can nominate another member for that position. If a member nominates another member for the position, I will ask the nominee if they accept because we need to ensure that the nominee will accept the, uh, the nomination. The clerk will announce the, the names of the candidates standing for appointment. We will close nominations and then candidates will each be given five minutes in order selected through a random draw of your name out of a hat, in our case out of a dish, um, to for the order of speakers to give five minutes to speak to council um, seeking your appointment. The clerk, then when we, when we get to voting, we will um, call each candidate alphabetically by surname for the voting process. Voting members shall rise to indicate their vote for each of the candidates. Each member of council may vote for up to one fewer than the number of candidates for which there are nominees. And this is where it gets a little complicated. Hypothetically, if all five city councillors are nominated uh, and accept the nomination for the regional councillor appointment, <coughs> then council as a whole, when we get to the voting process, would have up to four votes one vote fewer than the number of candidates. The same would occur as if we have only two candidates. Then it effectively council has one vote and we're voting, okay? At any time during the voting, if a majority of council 
um, votes for one of the candidates, that is six votes, then the process is over and the, the candidate has been selected by vote. Okay? Uh, the clerk's office will record all the votes. This is a public process. It must be a public process under the Municipal Act and all votes will be recorded and included in the minutes for City Council. So after, the, uh, in terms of the rounds of voting, uh, depending on how many nominees uh, put their name forward, at the end of each round of voting, the candidate that receives the fewest number of votes, if there's multiple candidates, will be dropped from the ballot for the next round of voting. If there is a tie for the fewest number of votes for a candidate, then we will draw the name from a hat, or in our case a dish, of who's to be excluded in subsequent rounds of voting. And then if each subsequent round, a maximum number of votes per member is one fewer than the number of candidates still standing, that, as I explained that before. And at the end of each round, if a candidate wishes to withdraw, if they're still on the ballot, they may do so at the end of that round of voting. So I just mentioned at the end of uh, any round of voting, if the majority of votes cast, six votes in this case, are cast for a nominee, then that nominee is selected as the additional regional councillor. If in the end, for whatever reason, there is a tie vote, then the unsuccessful candidate's name will be drawn from the dish. And the name that remains shall be the regional councillor, uh, the additional regional councillor on behalf of Brampton City Council. And then the record of votes shall remain part of the public record and included in the minutes. So that is the 10 step process. Uh, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer that before we get into the actual voting. So then, uh, Mr. Mayor, I will start the process from here. So the first thing I will do is I will call for nominations to be open um, for the position of the additional regional councillor for the city of Brampton. Members wish to put their name uh, or uh, the name on the list to speak to nominate themselves or somebody else, and then uh, subject to being called to the floor by the mayor, they can state what they wish to state. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to nominate Councillor Rowena Santos. Okay. Uh, Councillor Santos, do you accept that nomination? Yes, I do. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, thank you. I would like to nominate myself. Do you accept? I accept. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Councillor uh, Willis. To you, Mr. Mayor, I would like to nominate Councillor Bowman. Councillor Bowman, do you accept the nomination? Thank you. Do I take my no other? Mr. Mayor, I'll call a first time. Are there any other nominations? I'll call a second time. Are there any other nominations? And a third time, um, Mr. Mayor, I'll deem nominations closed. Okay. So we have three candidates. So, uh, what the clerk's office is going to do right now is we are going to, we have the, uh, where Charlotte is, um, behind Councillor Pileshi, we have the three names in our dish and we are going to pick the names out randomly. Uh, and then each of the members in this speaking order will be given five minutes to speak to Council about um, why they wish to be the additional regional councillor. Councillor Santos will be speaking first. Councillor Williams will be second, and that means Councillor Bowman will be third. <coughs> okay, so um, Councillor Santos, uh, you will have five minutes, and the clock, we will turn the clock on to, uh, to time you to address Council. Do I have to? Oh, there we go, we're on. <laughs> so through you, um, Mayor, I'd like to first thank Regional Councillor Vicente for your nomination and acknowledge all of the fellow councillors and the Mayor as well here today. You know, this is one of the most challenging votes for us on Council, especially on the first day. The residents of our city are asking all of us to work together and to find ways to collaborate. And the first decision we have to make has historically been one of the most difficult. At the end of the day, we still need to make a decision this afternoon, and I am asking for your support because I believe I will best serve our city and the residents at the regional table. My many um, issues that uh, affect the region are happening in wards one and five. 
um, important issues such as transit, infrastructure projects are directly within the area in which I represent, whether that's the scheduled downtown reimagined project, Riverwalk, the university, proposals and studies related to the LRT. Ward 1 has the second highest prevalence of low income earners in the city at 15.7%. Issues related to poverty and particularly sig are particularly significant uh, close to the downtown core. When it comes to community safety and policing, there is a disproportionate number of incidents within the area where I represent. At the regional level, it is especially valuable to have the experience in working with other levels of government and have an understanding of various policy and legislation that upper tier governments have. As many of you know, prior to being elected, I worked for over a decade at the Provincial Legislative Assembly. I have advocated and worked with MPPs and MPs fighting for affordable housing, transit, social and cultural development, and many more. I've also worked as a professional with experience in many other sectors, including the private sector with Magna International, the Royal Bank, as well as General Mills, and in the nonprofit sector, working with community service organizations, as well as nonprofit organizations, and working closely with venture capitalists and entrepreneurs. This me experience means that I can hit the ground running at the regional table. I understand the issues that we have to face and have the networks in all three sectors to be a strong voice for the city at the regional table. Last but not least, we need to come to the regional table to represent. The Filipino community is one of the fastest growing communities in the country, many of whom are moving to the Peel region. But sadly, we are not represented very well at all levels of government. This is an opportunity for Brampton to take the lead in some of that change. In closing, I'd like to humbly ask my colleagues for your vote as the appointed regional councillor. I have the professional background and experienced voice that will advocate for the priorities and our fair share at the Peel Region Table. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Santos. Uh, next to speak is Councillor Williams. You have five Thank minutes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of Council. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to um, highlight my experience with the vulnerable sector and in the region we know the vulnerable sector is a priority and in Ward 7 and 8 we do have our challenges. Um, because of a strong spirit that led me to this seat right now, I, my knowledge and experience that I will bring and I, I'm very confident that I will be the right candidate for the regional position. Over the past 19 years, I have contributed a voice on behalf of families and children of all ages coping with domestic violence, mental illness, substance abuse, neglect, trauma, and other personal challenges. I have been privileged to work in a number of roles as a parent support and behavioral consultant and therapist with Halton Region's Reach Out Center for Kids, Peel Children's Aid Society, <coughs> Peel Children's Center, Rapport Youth and Family Services, Associated Youth Family Services Appeal, the YMCA Youth Substance Abuse Program, Peel Chapter, and for both Peel and Catholic school boards. Seeking to understand the various factors driving their child's or student's behavior. In addition to my years of experience, I am a multi-systemic therapist. I have also acquired certifications and trainings in motivational interviewing, brief therapy, attachment theory, prevention risk identification, management and education through CAMH, trauma, treatment and youth addictions and in concurrent disorders. I therefore can offer a solid background of practical experience and formal, formal training and I have a well-based conceptual framework and understanding of the systemic factors that contribute to antisocial behaviors in children and youth. I understand that different parenting styles and family dynamics with respect to how factors such as culture and intergenerational differences impact youth development and the outcomes of our adult population. I apply this analysis in my community development work and counseling with youth and families. I have developed treatment plans specific to the needs and coach parents and educators through positive strategies to ensure that they are able to adopt effective ways to increase follow through and create a healthy parent or teacher child relationship and peace in their home and in school environments. 
A final major component to the work I have been engaged in over the years has been educating all of those who are responsible for child's development and emotion, emotional development. I have developed and facilitated workshops and trainings for parents and professionals, understanding driving factors of acting out behavior, ADHD, trauma, and many other topics within the scope of parent-child relationships and child development ages 1 to 25. Yes, keep them alive till 25. That brain isn't developed until 25. <laughs> with the rise of trafficking, and I know that I will be able to provide the region with sound recommendations based on my experience and knowledge of the vast intricacies and infrastructures associated with social services. Because of many families and children I have been privileged to learn from, I have been in meeting, I believe in meeting families and communities where they are at with no judgment and a significant amount of patience and empathy. Our communities today have a lot expected of them and are trying their best to raise their children and work and contribute in positive ways with the tools that they have, have based on their life experience and based on accessible and an inclusive community. As a result, I understand that the work doesn't start and end with frontline staff and organizations. I feel that I strongly, I feel strongly about connecting with pe people to the available resources as well as empowering families to self-advocate to ensure that they are equipped with the tools needed to live a healthy and cohesive life. I turn to you, Council, to choose me to represent Ward 7 and 8 as Regional Councillor, as well as the residents of all over Brampton. I am confident that I can bring a diverse knowledge base that will support the wide variety of residents in Peel. And I am confident that I will be of great value to Brampton and the region of Peel. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Uh, Councillor Bowman, you have five minutes. Thank you very much through you, Mr. Mayor, and to my fellow members of Council, uh, and to the other two candidates. Excellent speeches. Congratulations and uh, I'm happy that you've been nominated. Um, I would like the council to consider me for the additional regional council seat for this term. Um, having served on Brampton Council last term, beginning my second term and beginning the, being the designated alternate last year, I had the experience to be a voice for our council and residents at the region. I sat on some 13 different councils and committees last year uh, many of them here at the city. I was chair of economic development. I sit on Friends of Beauvert House Sports uh, Hall of Fame Committee, the um, uh, Council for Healthy Communities with William Osler, Partners in Project Green with the GTAA Airport Authority, and the Seniors Council, uh, among others. The majority of regional issues that we face uh, tend to fall in wards three and four. Everything from aging and uh, old neglected infrastructure that needs to be replaced to the lack of fiscal investments in many of the things that we need. Uh, you hear Councillor Medeiros and I often speak of no recreation centers in Ward 3 um, and that's something that needs to be addressed. Um, to the fact that social services underfunded, we have a large number of social services in Wards 3 and 4. Social housing, social assistance, family care, family housing. We have all that in wards three and four, as well as both conservation authorities, CVC and TRCA, both run through wards three and four. And that's a big part of what we talk about at regional issues. Uh, so the environmental concerns also happen in our wards. I would be a very strong advocate for our city. That was demonstrated over the last four years uh, by my perfect attendance at committee and at council meetings. Uh, I am a dedicated councillor. Uh, I was at the committee uh, or at the regional councillor for two of their meetings, including the very first one where we had an alternate and they tried to have me thrown out, uh, where I had to stand my ground and sit uh, without, without leaving council. So um, I'm, I'm not afraid to do that as well. I would advocate also to bring change to the current way we choose this person. Um, Electing a regional councillor from within our council only pits us against one another. It did in the last term of council, and it's going to in this term of council, and it has already. Um, when we have newly elected councillors, 
counselors who haven't experienced yet what goes on in this what goes on in this chambers making decisions facing the public having hundreds of angry residents facing you and talking to you and complaining to you there's a difference between the experience level that that i bring with all due respect to the two council members um, we are building relationships now we've been doing it for the past two weeks in everything we've done and when we build relationships we try to build rapport and by forcing us to pick one of us through an election process like this um, we are not helping to cement positive teamwork and unity simply not doing it i would hope to have the support of my fellow ward councillor since it has a large impact on our wards three and four and coincidentally ward three and four are two of the wards that have never had the extra regional councillor position before we just finished having uh, councillor gibson as the representative from wards um, one and five and previous we had uh, sandra Haynes, who was seven and eight we have never had it it's already unfair to create decisions by having certain councillors lobby make deals make pitches that does not add to a good solid unity council one of the major criticisms from the last term of council was the lack of cooperation communication and collaboration we have an opportunity to change that and continue to set Brampton apart from the region and the province. To truly make this fair and unbiased decision by Council, I would suggest either now or in the future that this change. We may reach a point where all our names go into a hat anyways. I suggest we just put the names in a hat from the beginning, choose it. Nobody has to vote. Nobody has to support anybody Council, else. Yeah, nobody has seconds. to seconds. What was that? 15 seconds. Okay. Less. We have an opportunity to start this new term of Council on a fresh page and with a commitment to work together and get results for this city. Bearing all that in mind, we are in this process now, and I do hope that I have your support to take that regional spot. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bowman. So members of council, we are now at the point of voting. So as I explained during the outline, voting will be taken in terms of uh, order of candidate's surname. So there are three nominees which means each member of council will get a maximum of two votes. Okay, I will be calling first Councillor Bowman, I'll then be calling Councillor Santos, and then alphabetically Councillor Williams. At the end of that round of voting, whoever has, if, if somebody has the majority, members of council, that will be the elected candidate. As I mentioned before, uh, if we don't have a majority, and then there is somebody, the person that has the num least number of votes will fall off the ballot for the next round of voting. I will call your names as I say, as I say, Councillor Bowman in this case, and I'll go uh, through ward councillors all the way to the end, and then I'll ask the mayor for his vote. Okay? Um, Any questions? We have a request to speak from uh, Councillor Bush. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, um, through, oh, or, sorry, Mr. Mayor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was bound to happen at some point. <laughs> um, Mr. Mayor, my apologies through you to the clerk. Um, can we is is it possible to change this process is it possible to to put names in a hat and and draw from a hat uh, through you mr. mayor it is not possible this is in council's procedure bylaw and the only way we would put names in a hat to actually pick the unsuccessful candidate and the the successful candidate is if there's only two members left at the end of voting and there's a statistical tie so it's nowhere in in uh, the municipal act or or it's it's procedural bylaw it's procedural bylaw, so this uh, dates back to 2005 when the additional regional councillor was uh, sure. uh, called for. Council passed a bylaw at that point in time to put in the procedure <coughs> bylaw of this process. Um, so this is the process that's been followed for three consecutive terms. Mm -hmm. So it's the will. If it's the will of council to change the procedure, procedural bylaw, we could do that now or in the future. Through you, Mr. Mayor, I'd have to check whether or not this is a provision of the procedural bylaw that's subject to waiving. If I would we, strongly recommend, as Council knows at all times, that uh, the procedural rules of Council are here for Council's benefit to make effective and, and uh, sound decisions, and I would strongly recommend against waiving the procedure bylaw. 100%, I knew you were going to say that. Um, <laughs> uh, to make changes to, the, to any uh, uh, procedural bylaw, is that open for, uh, does that go out to the public? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, yes, any public amendment to the Council Procedure Bylaw requires public notice and an opportunity for the public to come delegate to Council on the merits of that change. And at, um, 
could I then just request at this point, if it's um, if it's possible, that uh, this could come back to to council to review in the future? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I don't believe that's possible at this time, and okay. the, the 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 necessary urgency we have now, unfortunately, and I, I appreciate the predicament this puts yeah. council in, is because the regional council of Peel is organizing on Thursday, and. It is in Brampton's best interest. No, to have sorry, full Peter. I'm not. I, I don't mean it for this time. I mean it for in the future. Absolutely, point, that is something can council can. Can I make that request for for staff to report back? Absolutely. Okay. At, that, at the appropriate time after we do the selection process. Okay. Thank you. That would be a proper. Thank report. you, Mr. Mayor. Just want to confirm. Um, just once again clarify, the since they can self-nominate, they vote for themselves as well. The the candidates. That's correct. Every member of council has a vote, or in this case, we'll have up to two votes for the three candidates. Yes. So you can vote, a member can vote for themselves. Absolutely. Sure. Um, so, Mr. Mayor, members of council, I'm going to call for votes for first Councillor Bowman, and I'll be starting to my right in ward order, asking each member uh, if um, to stand in regard to voting in favor of that candidate. And I'll go through all the way, and then I'll come back and ask the mayor. Okay. Those members in favor of uh, voting for Councillor Bowman for the additional regional councillor, please stand. Councillor Santos, are you going to vote for Councillor Bowman? Councillor Visante. Councillor Willens. Councillor Paleshi. Councillor Bowman. Councillor Medeiros. Councillor Williams. Councillor Fortini, Councillor Singh, Councillor Dillon. There are three votes for Councillor Bowman. Yes, thank you. I will now call for vote. Oh, sorry, um, my apologies, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. You're not abstaining, you're not voting. Yes, okay. Uh, on that particular candidate. Um, so then I will call for Councillor Santos. Um, Councillor Santos, do you vote for Councillor Santos? Councillor Visante, Councillor Willens, Councillor Pileshi, Councillor Bowman, Councillor Medeiros, Councillor Williams, Councillor Fortini, Councillor Singh, Councillor Dillon. There are six votes for Councillor Santos and the mayor. Mike, I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay. There are six votes. Okay. I will now call for Councillor Williams. Please take your seats. Councillor, this is in favor of Councillor Williams. Councillor Santos. Councillor Visante. Councillor Willens. Councillor Paleshi. Councillor Bowman. Councillor Medeiros. Councillor Williams. Councillor Fortini. Councillor Singh. Councillor Dillon. Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry, that was four votes? So the round of voting is complete. We do have a majority. We have six votes for one member. That is correct. We do have a majority of votes for Councillor Santos with six. So in accordance with Councillor's procedural rules, Councillor Santos will be selected as the additional regional councillor. And Mr. Mayor, I believe there is a motion in front of you with, to fill in the blank for the name uh, to actually uh, um, name that individual. Motion. I just need to be moved and seconded by. Okay, mover, Councillor Vicente, and seconder, Councillor Pileshi. Okay, the City Councillor Santos be appointed as the additional regional councillor to the Region of Peel Council for the 2018 to 2022 term of office. All in favor? All in favor? Motion's carried. And Mr. Clerk, do we need to receive your presentation? Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, moved by uh, Councillor Vicente, seconded by Councillor Singh. The presentation 
of Peter Faye, City Clerk Office, the Chief Administrative Officer, to the Special Council Meeting of December 4th, entitled Appointment Process for Additional Regional Council to be received. All in favor? Motion is carried. Councillor Santos is on the board. Yes. Councillor Santos. Um, at this time, I'd like to put forward a motion that uh, that the city clerk and city solicitor be requested to report back to council on possible opportunities to allow the additional regional councillor appointed by Brampton City Council to represent the city at Region of Peel Council to be appointed not for the entire term of council, but instead on a rotational or such other basis within the council term of office in order to permit more than one city councillor to fulfill the role of additional regional councillor. And that such review also investigate the possibility of the alternate councillor appointed to attend Peel Regional Council in the temporary absence of Brampton Regional Councillor in accordance with Section 268 of the Municipal Act 2001, substituting as the additional regional councillor at the midpoint term of the council term. Second there, I've got uh, park here, it's on there. Yeah, okay. I have it here. Okay. Okay, I'm going to uh, defer to the clerk uh, to uh, speak to this item. Certainly. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. So the, the effect of Councillor Santos's motion is to request staff to report back on opportunities to um, effectively look at a uh, the change to the current appointment process for possibly uh, options that may include rotation and or substituting the alternate member of council, which we're going to be dealing with next, uh, into that role as the additional councillor. Um, so uh, I know I've had some conversations with Councillor Santos. Um, based on a, a very cursory um, review of the Municipal Act, it would, it would not appear that this type of option is something that can be fulfilled given the wording of the Municipal Act. Um, but what this re uh, motion is asking for is the City Clerk and City Solicitor to investigate and report back. So if that's the will of Council, then staff will report back on what the options are and what the limitations are uh, legislatively. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Peter. And uh, may I uh, speak to the motion? Um, Thank you, Councillor uh, Santos. I think the motion is being uh, out here. Is perfect. Yeah. Uh, I think Councillor Bowman, when he mentioned that this is a divisive uh, process, uh, is very correct. It's unfair. You know, Brampton's already underrepresented, it, and uh, we're put into this position where we have to argue at the start of our term. Um, so I appreciate the spirit of the motion put forward um, right now to have that rotation, because I think it speaks to the sense that we're all a team. We're Team Brampton, uh, and I think it's very uh, graceful that the um, su successful uh, nominee for the um, for the region is looking at ways to include uh, others. And so I think, uh, although technically this may be difficult, uh, where there is a will, there is a way, and there may be a legal possibility for this. And I don't think it hurts to have staff investigate this. So uh, I thank you for the spirit of, your, of the motion. I think it's, it, it should be welcomed by all of us. There, I, I see Councillor Bowman would like to uh, speak to this as well. Oh, would you like to speak to it further, Councillor Santos? Okay, Councillor Santos. I suppose I should have had some sort of preamble before just going straight into the motion. <laughs> we just want to get things done. Um, no, you're correct through you, uh, Mayor. Um, this is about collaboration, creating teamwork. As I mentioned in the beginning part of my speech, this has traditionally been one of the most difficult votes on the first meeting of council. We have to find ways to work together. So that is the spirit of this motion, is to really look into different ways that we could consider a rotation and have a rotation in this role. Um, Councillor uh, Bowman. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor. If, uh, if this motion passes, then I would like to add to the motion that we look at simply drawing names from a hat at the beginning. Uh, since we talked about that so if we're going to be looking at the whole process that we're undergoing can we look at that as well and uh, one thing one thing isn't clear to me is that that um, and perhaps we should make it clear that in the vote we had does it mean if the time is going to be shared for two years perhaps that 
the second place finisher, Miss Williams, would be the one who takes that position. So I'd just like to have that all looked at. Through, through you, Mr. Mayor, I believe <clears throat> that could be addressed in the report back in terms of if there are any options that can uh, um, are legislatively viable, that those that could be discussed. Okay, thank you. Okay, Councillor uh, Dillon. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Mayor. <clears throat> I have a question for the uh, clerk. Um, there's a number of different ways that um, um, the regional councillor can get selected, whether it's uh, appointment, whether it's election. A to Z, there's a number of different ways. Will staff be at any point in time coming back with um, possibilities for um, the election process to be changed? Uh, and will one of those options also be that is one councillor per ward uh, and seven regional councillors selected at large, um, with the selection being uh, criteria being the seven or six highest vote totals from city councillors. Is that something that could be back or is that could be brought back separately? Um, when you guys review, um, you do your reviews, or is that something that could be looked at through this uh, motion here? Through you, Mr. Mayor, um, the, the intent of this motion is to address the, the single appointment of the additional regional councillor. Um, when that report does come back with whatever it says about what's possible, not possible, that then may um, lead to a conversation amongst council about whether or not what you're suggesting is really um, um, very fundamental structural changes to the election process right. for Brampton City Council. Right. And I think that would be appropriate to have that debate at that point in time. Right. And I don't think at this point this report that may come back would address those wholesale changes because there are um, a number of different options for the electoral process, and that's a, that's a completely broader conversation. Yeah, what I'm, the reason why through the through the mayor is why I'm asking is because um, of certain municipalities of similar size, for example, um, Surrey, um, they don't have a ward system; they just have a uh, councillors at large, uh, and I'm not sure how beneficial regional councillors are to specific wards per se, uh, and so. An option there, having it at large, you, you uh, select that sixth seat, uh, and so uh, essentially it's uh, the uh, uh, the residents who are selecting it uh, based upon the vote totals itself. So not necessarily part of the actual focus, but it could be uh, something that they could look at per se. Through you, Mr. Mayor, I would say that that's a debate the council should have at a, at a future point, and mm -hmm. not. Um, perhaps when this report comes back, but this report is specific to um, the selection process and options for the additional regional council. Fair enough, and I'm just throw, putting it out there uh, for, for councils. Okay. Uh, Councillor Fertini. Thank you. Through the mayor, uh, just to the clerk, since we have to select uh, an alternate in case someone's absent, <coughs> can we add in this motion since he's going to be there in our absence and he would know more details what's going on at the region, he gets appointed in case something like this happens in the report? So through you, Mr. Mayor, I believe that the next item on the agenda after we conclude this item is 4.2, which is the actual selection of the alternate member. Which is the backup? I, is that what you're, in, you're yes, speaking I, to? Yes, I, I understand. What I'm trying to say is, since we got to select an alternate, and he's going to be already at the region and knows the facts, if something like this happens in two years down the road, can he actually just be appointed directly to take the spot for the regional spot since he's already there? The, the in case something happens, through you, Mr. Mayor. In case something happens. Possibly, yep. through you, Mr. Mayor, yes. And I believe that's the second clause of Councillor Santos's motion. That's, that's what right. she's trying to get at in terms of exploring those options. Okay. No additional uh, comments. Uh, having said that, uh, we do have an outstanding motion here from. Uh, actually, uh, f first we'll vote on uh, Councillor Santos's motion. Uh, uh, moved by Councillor Santos, seconded by Councillor Singh, that the city clerk and city solicitor be requested to report back to council on the possible opportunities to allow the additional regional councillor appointed by Brampton City Council to represent the city at the region appeal 
council to be appointed not for the entire term of council, but instead on a rotational basis within the council term of office in order to permit more than one city councillor to fulfill the role of additional regional councillor. And the such review be investi investigate the possibility of the alternate councillor appointed to attend Peel Region Council in the temporary absence of Brampton Regional Councillor in accordance with Section 268 of the Municipal Act 2001, substituting as the additional regional councillor at the mid-term point of the council term. All in favour? Motion carries. We do have an outstanding motion here from uh, Councillor Vicente, seconded by Councillor Dillon, that the report uh, from Peter Fay City Clerk of the Office of the Chief Administrative Officer dated November 12, 2008, uh, to the Special Council meeting December 4th, read the appointment of the additional regional councillor, regional appeal for 2018 2022, be received. We've received the the presentation now we have to receive the report. So all in favor? Carried. Four point two the next item. We have a staff report, item four point two regarding the appointment of an alternate regional councillor in the event of a temporary absence of a Brampton Regional Councillor. Do any members have questions on the staff report or the selection process? Okay. Councillor Dillon. Are we doing the nomination? Sorry, uh, Mr. Mayor. We're doing the nominations now, correct? Uh, right? Any questions on the staff report or selection process? Oh, no, process? sorry. Okay. Nothing on the report. So I have a motion to receive the report. Another question on the report? Okay, Councillor Bowman. Thank you very much, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, to the city clerk, I need to have a turn around. Like this piece. I'll be I'll be glad when we are back in council chambers. Uh, just a question regarding when we took the opportunity to add the additional alternate councillor. Um, we had to do that as an independent vote, simply because it happened two years, two two years and a bit into the term already. And we just had a vote. Can, the, can, can we not take the process and say that the second place finisher is now the, if, if they would like it, the second place finisher is now the alternate so that we have one vote? Through, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so this provision for the alternate member to attend regional council from the local tier council uh, is new and in effect as of January 2018. Um, when Council um, amended its procedure bylaw to put those provisions in, um, the best information we had at the time was to make the process similar to the selection process we just went through. So the actual bylaw says today that what's referred to as the Section 19 selection process be used for selecting the alternate member. Um, to me, it just seems redundant, that's all. No, no problem. It, it, it could be redundant depending on the number of nominees that put their name forward. Thank you. Um, Councillor Dillon. Nope. I just want to okay. nominate somebody. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so, you're just aware if you're fine, I'll go through the, the process for the alternate members. Oh. No way. Okay, Councillor Pelushi. Oh, you're. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I don't know if I, uh, maybe I don't like the answer that you gave, Peter, but. <laughs> so there was only, there was three people that just, that expressed their interest that they wanted the seat. One of those have now, uh, one of those members have now said, just give it to the second place. That's, that's, that's possible for us to do that. Through you, Mr. Mayor, it is possible. Having said that, though, um, it would be essentially passing a motion to waive Council's procedural rules <laughs> to go through Section 19. So I knew this, the smirks would come out of that. Um, and my advice would be that we probably shouldn't do that. There are other ways to achieve what you're suggesting in terms of the nominees. <coughs> if, if I will say for the benefit of Council, if only one member uh, is nominated, self-nominated or nominated by another member, and no other person puts their name forward, then it would essentially be a ratification vote. So that could be possible. That is correct. With only three members actually wanting the position, then yeah. one of them steps out. 
then there is only other one, yeah. one other one. And just to be clear, the, the universe of potential candidates now is four, because we have s seven regional councillors, including the mayor. Well, yeah. 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 <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. So, um, Mr. Mayor, if unless I think Councillor Dillon wants to nominate somebody, is that correct? So, um, to the clerk, should we receive the the report first? Okay, so uh, moved by uh, Councillor Singh, seconded by Councillor Dillon. The report from Peter Fay, City Clerk, uh, from the CEO office, dated November 12, 2018, at the special council meeting, December 4th, read the appointment of the alternate <coughs> regional councillor in the event of a temporary absence of the Brampton Regional Councillor at the Region Appeal Council for 2018-22 be received. All in favor? Motion carries. I now Thank turn to the appointment process to the clerk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So I will follow a similar process to what we just went through. I'll now open nominations and call for members of council to either nominate themselves or nominate another member of council by putting your name on the board. Councillor Dillon. Okay. Councillor uh, Dillon. Hi, uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Uh, Mayor. I'd like to nominate uh, Councillor Singh. Councillor Singh, do you accept the nomination? Yes, I do. Councillor Willens. Councillor Willens? Yes. Um, okay. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Councillor Williams. Councillor Williams. Councillor Williams, do you accept the nomination? Willens nominated Williams. Uh, okay. Are there any other nominations? Councillor Dillon, your name's off. Are there any other nominations going once? Are there any other nominations going twice? Uh, I'll deem nominations now closed, Mr. Mayor. So in accordance with our process, we will draw names from our bowl. Uh, excuse me, Speaking order. Councillor Williams. Councillor Williams will speak first, followed by Councillor Singh. Councillor Williams, you have the floor for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> I, I have um, shared um, why I do feel I should be at the region, and uh, I echo that once again. So, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Councillor Singh, you have the floor for five minutes. Sure. <laughs> Through you, Mayor. So for the past uh, four years, I was a uh, Peel District School Board uh, trustee. I sat on audit committee uh, representing a budget of $1.9 billion uh, for over three years. Um, I worked on a lot of uh, difficult issues. Uh, we were talking about making difficult decisions. I worked on the most difficult, including uh, sex education, Islamic prayers. Uh, so I have the experience of making those decisions when they're needed to be made and making the right decisions. Uh, I also served on OPSPA, the Ontario Public School Boards Association, where I was a regional director, and my motion uh, related to diversity and equity uh, was passed unanimously with the support of all the school boards across the province. So I bring a wealth of experience, wealth of lobbying, uh, the different levels of government, and um, my reason for running as alternate, I want to be uh, an additional voice for wards nine and 10, uh, because when it comes to especially the social services side, I believe my wards are lacking. Uh, we've been seeing a spike in uh, youth uh, violence. Uh, we have issues around, uh, surrounding seniors. And I feel like uh, we need a bit more attention, especially at the regional level. And I do work very closely with the social services uh, that are offered in the area. Uh, I work with the Brampton Springdale Network. Uh, we're trying to start a community hub in one of my high schools. Uh, I organize and run uh, career fairs, mentorship workshops, so I know uh, the difficulties that arise, especially uh, when it comes to funding and support uh, from the region. So that's why I would like this opportunity uh, to be an alternate, uh, to assist uh, our uh, regional councillor uh, from the city councillors and uh, bring that uh, voice that I think is needed uh, for wards 9 and 10. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Singh. So members of council now in accordance with the procedural rules, 
Uh, we will do, uh, proceed to voting, and we'll be voting in order of last of surname first. So the voting order will be calling for votes for Councillor Singh, followed by cal calling for votes for Councillor uh, Williams. Um, because there are only two candidates, every member of council only gets one vote, and it still requires a majority of council uh, for the successful candidate to be selected. So I will still follow the same process, starting from words one and five, going through asking for the members to vote, and then finally with ending with the mayor. And I won't forget you this time. I apologize. So um, all in favor of Councillor Singh as the alternate member, please stand to be counted. Councillor Santos, Councillor Visante, Councillor Willens, Councillor Paleshi, Councillor Bowman, Councillor Medeiros, Councillor Williams, Councillor Fortini, Councillor Singh, Councillor Dillon. Okay. Mayor, I'm sorry. Okay. So there are six, six votes. Six votes for Councillor Singh. <laughs> Um, as we have to conclude the process, so all votes for Councillor Williams, please stand. So that would be Councillor Willens, Councillor Paleshi, Councillor Bowman, Councillor Medeiros, Councillor Williams, and Mr. Mayor. Abstain. Understand? So that's five votes for Councillor Williams. This four. Sorry, did you abstain? I did, yes. Sorry, I thought you said I'll stand and just say stand. Okay. Okay. So you're abstaining? Yes. Okay. <laughs> abstaining is, is allowed in the selection process, um, but it has no bearing on this. So therefore, the successful alternate candidate is Councillor Singh. So there will be a motion, I believe, there, Mr. Mayor, for that position. Okay. I have a motion to appoint the Councillor Singh as alternate regional councillor. Uh, all those in favor? Motion carries. Uh, we have a staff report item 4.3 regarding uh, the City Council Governance proposed committee structure and appointments. Uh, do we have any members who have questions on the staff report? Uh, Councillor Dillon. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so we're on 4.3 now, right? 4.3, yes. Uh, I have a, an amendment uh, and I have a motion written up. Uh, and I'll read the motion. Is that okay? Yes. Um, so it's in regards to. Just let me pull it up one second. No, I don't believe you do, but you can put it up. Um, I'll just read it and then I think hopefully um, the clerk has already put it up. That notwithstanding the decision of council uh, at its meeting of September 12, 2018, pursuant to resolution 2C239-2018, authorizing staff to recruit qualified citizens and make recommendations to council for appointments to uh, adjudicative committees, tribunals, and positions for the 2018-2022 term of council, Recommendations for membership on the following committees and tribunals be undertaken by the Citizen Appointments Committee. Uh, A, Committee of Adjustment. B, uh, Brampton Appeal Tribunal. Uh, and C, uh, Property Standards Committee. Essentially, uh, the motion is uh, returning to last term where the Citizen Appointment Committee uh, selects uh, the members of uh, those committees. We have a, a move by and seconded by? Uh, sorry, seconded by Fortini, Councillor Fortini. Uh, anyone want to speak to the motion? Councillor? So should we? Can we pull on the amendment first, right? For you, Mr. For 
you, Mr. Mayor, we do vote on the amendment first. The amendment um, is really asking for Council to revert back to uh, a decision that it made in September of this year, which was to empower city staff to go out and do the recruitment for these adjudicative bodies, namely Committee of Adjustment, Property Standards Committee, Brampton Appeal Tribunal, citizen members for the Audit Committee, screening officers and hearing officers, because of their <coughs> deliberative function that's at arm's length from Council and they're making final decisions, staff would go out and find qualified individuals to fulfill those roles and bring those recommendations back to Council for final appointment. Council, at the end of the day, makes the appointment. Um, what Councillor uh, Dylan is uh, moving in his motion is going back to a process that existed previously, which was uh, staff will still do the recruitment, but it will be a citizen appointment committee consisting of members of Council that will do the interviews, evaluations, and recommendations back to Council for appointment. Does anyone like to speak to Councillor Dillon's motion? Okay, seeing none. Well. So if there's no comments, then we'll vote on the on the motion. So Mr. Mayor, I think we should probably just stand that one down because there are some staff recommendations in the report 4.3. This does not conflict with those, but we should be dealing with those recommendations, and then we can deal with Councillor Dillon's amendment after. Okay. Yeah, so it's still a proper motion. So can we... Sorry. Um, Councilor sorry, Dillon. Sorry, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, the amendment we can make now, though, uh, and then vote on the, all the recommendations uh, at the end, no? The, through you, Mr. Mayor, I think that the, the proper procedural way to deal with it is there is, a, there is a report before you. It has a series of staff recommendations. Yes. Normally, a member would introduce those staff recommendations as a motion and then may move an amendment in addition to that. What you've done is you've introduced the amendment that on the floor right now is not the actual staff recommendations. Right. I would treat your motion as an amendment. It's not contrary. It's not an yes. amending any words. It's, it's an additional motion. Um, but we still have the, the base staff recommendations to deal with. If, if Fair enough. So, we're okay. just so let's, let's move the motion yeah. now. We already have it. Uh, moved by Councillor uh, Singh and seconded by Councillor Dillon. Uh, and uh, do we need to read the, the entirety of the motion out? or? It's in the report. It's in the report. Okay. So... I think there might be discussion. Uh, yeah. Sorry, on the rest of the report, though. Yes. So, I, so, <laughs> so sorry, for just four, for, four the, for, sorry, go ahead. for council's benefit, the mayor's done the right thing. He's introduced the main motion, which are the staff recommendations, and now brings everything on the floor. Okay. And council can have a debate on the main motion as well as okay, the Okay, fair enough. Okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, Councillor Pelushi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, and I'm happy to support Councillor Dillon's uh, motion, but I do want to talk about... Um, some of the um, um, other items in the uh, in item 4.3 and mainly I guess it's um, and I think some other councillors will probably talk about the inclusion and equity committee so I'll save my comments for that after but um, transit council chairs and the Brampton Community Safety Advisory Committee um, it, it says in the report that uh, and it lists some reasons why they not be reestablished at this time and I don't I don't 100% um, agree with those, as the Transit Council of Chairs was a, was a very new committee formed in uh, mid-term, uh, mid I guess, of, of last term. I didn't think that it, it was able to get, you know, off the ground, so I don't believe that that is a, a, a good enough reason to, to stop that. I think it's extremely important. Um, much like uh, a lot of committees, um, when they're just beginning, they... Uh, um, it, it struggles. It, it's hard to get, you know, sometimes the right people, the right um, staff at the table to uh, to discuss some of the issues. And I, I think transit is so important for the city of Brampton to, to have a committee uh, structured around that. I think uh, I think it's something that we should uh, give it another shot and uh, and and see it go through. So I hope that um, council can can support that. Also, the Brampton Community Safety Advisory Committee. I don't believe that there's any councillor up here that didn't have that comment at the door, uh, something to do with safety. I realize that the provincial legislation um, talks a lot about it being at the uh, at the regional level. It, it does say municipality. It doesn't say upper or lower tier. Um, safety policing at the upper tier um, uh, is there, as we all know. Um, but this hits all of us uh, individually in our communities 
in, in our wards that we represent. I don't feel like uh, this is something that um, um, we should be giving up at this time. The committee um, over the last three years, three and a bit, um, no, two and a bit, sorry, uh, it, it was struggling a little bit in the beginning, like, uh, like I said about uh, uh, the other committees, but towards the end, we were really starting to make some good, uh, some good headway and having some really good discussions. So I would hate for us to uh, um, to not allow this to go forward. I uh, with with some of the new members around this table, um, I welcome a lot of your ideas in, in uh, progressing this committee further and, and excelling and seeing what we can do. As we all know, Brampton uh, uh, Safe City uh, left a big gap and uh, a void in our community that we represent. So I would strongly feel like we uh, we continue to give this a shot. And I ask council to uh, to support that. So those are the two items that I have. I'd like to whatever I have to do to add or delete uh, those from the staff recommendations. I'd like to do so. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Is that amendment going to come in the form of a motion or through you, Mr. Mayor? It will. Okay. We are helping the councilor draft the okay. motion because motions have to be in writing and have a mover and a seconder before okay. they're properly considered. Okay. We'll wait for that. Councillor Vicente. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to second Councillor Pileschi's comments. Um, I believe that um, safety and community safety was one of the priorities identified over the past uh, several months and uh, certainly during the municipal election. The residents of the city are looking to us to provide leadership in areas of safety, whether it's in communities or whether it's road safety or uh, how we handle uh, lighting where it's uh, not, a pro not to a s safe levels. And so realizing that the Region of Peel is currently working on a community safety and well-being plan, which we are fully participating in, that plan won't come to full fruition until about two years from now. And so that is a long time for us to be here at the city, sitting around and not doing anything on a very important file. So I would like to see the safety committee continued. Uh, welcome any input from staff on what it is that we can do now here at the city of Brampton to make our community safer. Who are the stakeholders that we could be working with on an ongoing basis to make the community safer, to involve input and to seek engagement from people. With respect to transit, I also agree with the councillor that we should be continuing that committee. And uh, I, I feel very strongly that that committee should be more heavily comprised of residents who are very interested in this file. And so, uh, Councilor Pesci, I want to second your comments, and I believe that we should continue with those two committees. Thank you. Okay, um, Councilor um, Medeiros. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, I support uh, I, the community safety, and I do support Councillor Pileschi's comments regarding uh, transit's important to people. Um, but as my comments stated in the last term of council, I didn't believe it should be a, a, a committee of chairs. It should be really uh, cross-representative uh, throughout the city, uh, which would include uh, um, not only residents, but um, people from different sectors. Uh, but just to the city clerk, sure, my apologies, uh, to the city clerk, um, I guess with the motion that Councillor Plush is going to bring forward, the suggestion to, to change the uh, terms of reference, would that be at this stage or would it be when it comes back from staff in terms of the terms of reference? So through you, Mr. Mayor, I believe Councillor Pileschi's amendment, seconded by Councillor Vasante, is that uh, is essentially directing the clerk to bring forward to council next week. Um, terms of reference for establishing, re-establishing the Transit Council Chairs and the Brampton Community Safety Advisory Committee. So if that carries, staff will bring back those terms of reference for Council's consideration. Now through the Mayor um, to uh, City Clerk, if I want to propose amendments to uh, that Transit Committee per se, um, because I would want it to be uh, cross representative and members of the community and not chairs, but do have a transit committee. Is that 
a completely different motion, or is that next week? Through you, uh, Mr. Mayor, that could be um, moved now, or it could be moved next week when the terms of reference actually come back, because council will be still making a decision on its terms of reference next week. Okay, so I can make amendments then. That's correct. Great. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, Council Williams. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I am also concerned with community safety um, being removed. Uh, it was the number one concern in Ward 7 and 8. And as we move forward, we are going to be faced with other challenges that I think it will be important for us to work together and come up with some very strong strategic strategies um, moving forward to deal with this. Um, just have a question around the Inclusion and Equity Committee. Um, I, is it possible to maybe have a little bit further cons consultation with um, the groups before completely removing it, maybe for another six months, to get a fully, full understanding of um, where they would like to see us go and how we can be beneficial moving forward, um, just, just as, as an option? <coughs> I assume that would require a motion, but uh, we'll defer to the clerk. Through you, Mr. Mayor, it would. So, uh, Councillor, if you're referring to the Inclusion and Equity Committee? Yes, correct. So, Council's making a decision today to establish or not establish that. So, if mm -hmm. Council um, decided not to establish it, um, the report speaks to, you know, Council over the next few months is going to be setting its term priorities, mm -hmm. looking at implementation of Vision 2040. Um, working with the community leaders from <coughs> representatives and advocates from those previous committees. And that doesn't preclude Council in the future from coming forward and a report coming forward to actually address setting up a similar committee, something um, that integrates th those types of functions. Mm -hmm. um, so that is an option that's still available to Council in the future. Uh, maybe the CAO wishes to. Yes, uh, CAO. Mayor to Council, I would definitely take that direction immediately to work with the team to see yeah. if we come back with whether it's an action plan or another committee. So. Yeah. I would welcome that opportunity. And for the communication uh, with, with community groups um, so that we yeah. can have a clear... Because maybe there's a uh, different way to get some actions done. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, Councilor Williams, are you finished? Yes. Okay, Councilor Dillon. Yeah, I just... Uh, sorry, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. So I was wondering if uh, Councilor Willi uh, Williams, if you had moved... Um, if there's direction required, or is that something you're going to bring back anyways for the inclusion and equity? Is, Clark, did you, you move something? Do we require a motion? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Normally, I would say yes. I'd always defer to yes mm -hmm. in terms of a motion okay. if there's direction given, just so it's clear and council's okay. clear on the instructions it's providing to staff. Okay. So, so we assume that uh, Council Williams has moved it. Mm -hmm. We will then have to have a motion because a motion at council has to be in writing. Have a mover okay. and a seconder. Okay. Um, so. Clarification as well. Um, in the motion, uh, I'm assuming you're going to get back on and put a motion. Uh, can you also um, include what you had said in the scope of the terms of direction that's coming back? Uh, sorry, the stuff that you had mentioned to ensure that in the um, terms of reference that that's also acknowledged. Yeah? Okay. So uh, um, I'd also had a question as well trying to keep track of everything. Um, the, tra the Transit Council of Chairs, um, that was discussed. Um, I believe, uh, Councilor Medeiros, you had mentioned that there should be, uh, um, sorry, uh, citizen representation on that as well. Um, but what, uh, if you can do the chair, if I may uh, ask uh, uh, Councilor Medeiros uh, to expand on what, uh, what other uh, representation should be on that? If you were, because I believe you're going to mo uh, move the motion. Okay, so can we have the question from Councilor Dillon to Councilor yeah. Majeros? So, through you, Mr. Mayor, so this is uh, Council's debating the report and the recommendations that are before and that have been moved as motions. So, um, I believe Councilor. Dylan, you've I just want a clarification through the through the it's, mayor. It's not an opportunity to start questioning individual members. If Councillor Medeiros wishes to respond, that's entirely up to Councillor Medeiros to put his name on the board. Okay. Fair so enough. we'll get to Councillor Medeiros uh, yeah. shortly, but we have Councillor Santos uh, up next. Uh, so, Mayor, you 
Mayor, a uh, point of clarification. Are there any motions on the floor right now? And if there are, do they need to be voted on? And if not, is it possible to bring forward a different motion regarding this report? We have the main report and we have two amendments. Okay. Correct. Um, so I'm wondering if it would be possible for me to bring forward a motion uh, specifically after being inspired by Vision Brampton's recommendation number one regarding youth engagement. Uh, whereas the average age in Brampton is among the youngest at 36.5 years old, whereas it has been expressed through the reports and consultation that there are few youth opportunities to engage with the city and the voices of our young people are not regularly heard in the decision making process. Whereas the City of Brampton should play a proactive role in providing leadership and mentorship opportunities for our youth. Whereas the 2040 vision indicates that increased civic engagement and participation from youth is paramount in deciding the city's future. Therefore, be it resolved that city staff be requested to report at the first meeting of council in January 2019 or earlier on proposed terms of reference for establishing a Brampton Youth Council and Mentorship Program in collaboration with identified Brampton youth organizations and comprised of youth ambassadors from all Brampton high schools to regularly advise city council on various youth related matters including but not limited to the future university, arts and culture, parks and recreation matters, and neighborhood safety. Do you have a seconder for that? All right, Councillor Saint. Okay. I assume we'll get that on the paper and it can be Thanks. an amendment. Uh, Councilman, anything additional, Councillor Santos? No. Nope. No, Councilman Duros. Uh, thank you for the chair. Um, I think the city clerk had expressed that at the time we bring back the terms of reference, uh, that we can make changes. I guess my, my concern is uh, when we come back, the scope of um, the initiative or the committee around transit chair or chairs of transit, chairs of council transit, um, would not include a community-wide um, approach and uh, the membership thereof. So meaning that I guess the focus of uh, this committee would really be more internal as it would be uh, just members of council. Um, so at this stage, City Clerk, I'm looking for your guidance. Does it, if I want to put a motion then, or an amendment to the amendment, that a public, that a transit committee be established with members of the committee, with members of the community, to come back and provide us with um, feedback on the type of transit initiatives or where we're going with, with transit in the city. So more of a citizen-wide uh, committee. Would that would be something that I would bring forward as an amendment to replace the amendment put forth by Councillor Pelushi? Because the scope and nature is very different, and that's my concern. Yeah. So uh, to the city clerk. So through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, <coughs> Or council, council, if Councillor Pelleschi's amendment carries, it's to have staff report back to Council next week with essentially the existing terms of reference for the Transit Council of Chairs. It is not at this point um, approving the committee um, because Council's procedure bylaw is very clear that Council cannot establish any committee unless it approves terms of reference. There are no terms of reference here today for the Transit Council of Chairs. So if that comes back next week, Council is fully entitled to amend that terms of reference, change the structure, change the composition, change the mandate as it sees fit. Um, so that is something that's within Council's purview next week. This does not um, tie Council's hands in terms of that committee. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Um, Councillor Vicente. Yes. Uh, through you, Mayor, to the Clerk. Can staff uh, incorporate some of uh, Councillor Madero's suggestions that he has made here this afternoon? into their report and consider them? Um, I, clerk, I don't think. So through you, Mr. Mr. Mayor, um, if Council Pelleschi's motion carries, then um, the clerk's office will be bringing back the, the Transit Council of Chairs in terms of reference as they exist today. And I'll be, uh, through you, there may not be enough um, direction here today in terms of in, in changing that composition. Um, but that may be something that Council can do next week. So I, I don't want to uh, look into the minds of Council that aren't articulate in terms of how they want this new structure set up, and I'll defer to the CAO if he has any other 
guidance on this. Yeah, I think I'd agree with the clerk, even in a week's time, for us to give you our best recommendations and how that committee should be structured, who should be on it, would be limited. We need a little more time. Much like Councillor Santos gave us till January. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Are there any other speakers? Councillor uh, Plushy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I think that what we need to do is follow a process. I think we're all leaning towards that now, but um, coming back next week, the terms of reference isn't before us right now. Um, and I understand and, and, and I'm agreeing with everything that Councillor Medeiros is saying, and, and I welcome um, everybody else's input once that terms of reference comes back um, we can see very um, cleanly here that uh, staff are recommending not going ahead with these committees anymore so obviously something wasn't working but with new members of council um, with new ideas um, from maybe some old members of council uh, I think that uh, we can really get this um, get these committees uh, moving in the right direction and and I agree with everything which Councillor Medeiros is, is saying in, in making those changes but we need those terms of reference I think before us so the pro that's the process so I don't want Councillor Dillon or anyone else feeling like we're uh, pulling the wool over your eyes or anything like that let's get the terms of reference in front of us and and look at those and and then make the necessary changes thank you mr. mayor okay Councillor Medeiros Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Pelleschi. Um, just to staff, uh, and I appreciate this is always a difficult task, and everybody wants to add a committee for all their special interests and all the big issues. I would hope that in every staff report you identify what the FTE impact will be, how much staff hours are dedicated to it, because I think it's important for this council to know, as important as it is, all these committees, uh, it's taking away time from your day-to-day -day operation, certainly. Um, and that certainly has a, a budget impact and uh, that has a resource impact. So we just have to be mindful of that and I think there, we have to try to find that, uh, um, that equilibrium and, and maybe through further discussions and identifying staff hours required uh, that would give us more of a um, sober second thoughts on, on some of these committees that we've added. Thank you, Council Medeiros, if I could, Mayor. Yeah, yes. Again, we're... The committee of the whole, it's a small committee, and you have public works committees, you know, every two weeks, and we really thought transit could be covered there, but again, we'll take, we'll take your um, lead on this. We're just trying to be more productive to get things done, and, and uh, so thank you for that, Councillor. Okay, okay Councillor uh, Willens. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor, to the clerk. Um, the, when this comes back, uh, in terms of reference for all these committees, there's a couple of committees on there that I don't think need to meet every month. Can we make a change in that then, when we're in terms of reference? Through you, uh, Mr. Mayor, if, if it's a committee that's on the staff recommendation today to reestablish, yeah. based on the terms of reference that are set out in Appendix 1 to the report, and it's a, it's a quarterly versus by, by monthly versus monthly, if, if that's the will of Council, we should um, make that change now. Okay. I'll make the one. Okay. okay. Councillor Willens, are you uh, done? Uh, yeah, I just want to get this sheet there. Okay. Uh, Councillor Santos. So I have a whole bunch of uh, whereas, oh, through you, Mayor. <laughs> I have many whereases within uh, this particular motion I'm going to bring forward. Uh, I do have it in writing, so for the clerk, you could take it after. But I'm not going to read all the whereas's because this just has to do with the uh, Innovation Centre, the National Centre. According, to, according Center. to the clerk, you need to read the... Oh, I do? I need to read it right now? It, through, not through, the whereas's. Through, through, through you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, Mr. Mayor. All of the whereas's? If a, council, oh, if a member of council introduces a motion and it's to be included as part of the motion, it needs to be uh, understood, read in full, so council is informed and know what they're, they know what they're voting on. Okay, here we go. Whereas Brampton is the second fastest growing municipality with one of the youngest populations in the country and is the only large municipality over a population of 200,000 without a university. Whereas residents and businesses of Brampton have called for university in the, in the city for decades, 
Whereas Brampton lags behind competing municipalities like Toronto, Waterloo, and Hamilton in innovation and economic development. Whereas economic development and innovation have been noted as key priorities in Brampton's Vision 2040. Whereas every dollar spent on post-secondary education creates $1.36 for the Canadian economy and surrounding communities benefit from off campus student spending which can generate as much as 17.5 billion in economic activity whereas Brampton is situated in the center of the innovation super corridor and has been noted to have tremendous economic development potential as an innovation hub between Toronto and Waterloo whereas significant demand exists in the country and around the world for skills in cybersecurity whereas the federal government has prioritized innovation through its strategic innovation fund where the, as the city of Brampton, its residents, together with Ryerson and Sheridan College and other stakeholders, have spent countless hours in su successfully proposing a university in Brampton, whereas in April 2018, an announcement was made by the provincial government for $90 million in capital funding to help build the approved Ryerson University expansion in Brampton, whereas the city of Brampton has allocated $150 million in funding to support plans to build an innovation center and global uh, national center for cyber security, to further complement and support post-secondary learning and economic development in Brampton. Whereas the city has access to space and has already purchased property to support the proposed Innovation Center and National Center for Cybersecurity. Whereas an unanticipated announcement to cut the original $90 million capital support for the university was made by the provincial government on October 23rd. Whereas the traditional model of post-secondary education and learning is changing and with a cut to capital funding, Brampton must find creative solutions to move forward with this important project, whereas $90 million cut has no immediate impact on Ryerson's plan to move forward with the Innovation Center and National Center for Cybersecurity, whereas Ryerson's Chang School of Continuing Education will commence courses in Brampton in January 2019, regardless of the cut to capital funding, whereas residents, the business community, Ryerson and Sheridan have expressed to the city that they would like to move forward with plans for the University Innovation Center and National Center for Cybersecurity and look for creative ways to solve the challenge regarding the cut to funding from the provincial government. Therefore, be it resolved that city staff be requested to report back at the first meeting of council in January 2019 on proposed terms of reference for establishing a cross-sector and citizen-based action committee on innovation and post-secondary education to advance council's priority to establish an innovation center national center for cybersecurity and post-secondary education in Brampton. Okay. Moved by and Long seconded. Mm -hmm. Do you have a seconder? Council of Can I can I speak to that? Ma yes. Uh, again, I hate sounding like First of all, uh, Council, you want to achieve so much coming right out of the gate. I think that's admirable. I just believe that um, we haven't had a chance to set our priorities. I do believe that talking to each and every one of you, everything um, Councillor Santos said is so important to you that I would think that this would be a top priority for Council. I think setting up a separate committee, though, um, might not get us to where we want to go. I think what we've done in the past is it became an update at every economic development committee. So almost every two weeks, um, if we make this a priority, we will give updates to this council on, on what we can do. And we can develop actions within that. I think that you know everything Councillor Santos said is what we're trying to do. And I think setting up separate committees doesn't really <coughs> advance it as, as quickly as, as you may think. So I'm saying it's so important, maybe if you could allow a little time for this council to set some priorities over the next two months, and I think this would rise to the top, then we can really allocate resource to it and really drive it forward. But to set up a separate committee now without, you know, a consensus amongst the group, that this be a top priority for this council, so I just think just allow us a little more time. Okay, uh, Councillor Santos, you still have the floor if you have an additional comment. Yeah, so I, I get that. I understand that staff, the city, everybody's working towards this this committee. The spirit of this particular motion regarding this committee is uh, a citizen-based committee to help things uh, and to involve people in the private sector uh, as well as in the nonprofit sector, bring perhaps back some folks who were involved in the Blue Ribbon Panel. Um, unfortunately, some of the assumptions regarding where things are at with the university in particular has changed. It would be really great to add extra gravitas on this committee 
to find somebody in the private sector to help really drive this forward and even um, you know, talk to other members in the private sector as private sector people themselves, venture capitalists, entrepreneurs, philanthropists, whatever the case may be. Having this committee would actually allow us to broaden our network and reach in the various other people who will help us move this project forward. Okay. Uh, thank you, Councillor Santos. Uh, Councillor uh, Medeiros. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, I have a motion uh, to put forth account, uh, members of council. Uh, as a previous member of the BIA, uh, along with my colleagues, Councillor Bowman and previous uh, Councillor uh, Gibson and Moore. Are you still on the floor? Yeah, we, we have six motions on the floor right now. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I wanted to just. Yeah. Well, I'm putting Sorry. forth the motion. Do you want to speak to <laughs> yeah, yeah. Essentially, uh, I have a motion here, uh, which is to uh, allow for the BIA to make quorum without all four councillors being there, because that was a challenge over the last year. Um, so I will read this as uh, advised by the city clerk, um, that the clerk be directed to prepare an amendment to the appropriate governing bylaw regarding the composition of the downtown Brampton Business Improvement Area. Such, uh, such that the quorum requirements for the board do not require one of the four appointed members of the council to be in attendance to convene a meeting. And that's seconded by? Seconded by uh, Councillor Bowman. Okay. My apologies. Okay, that's amendment number seven. Uh, Councillor Dillon. I wanted to speak to um, one of the amendments, may I do yeah. so? Yes. Um, you have your choice of seven now. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it was six of seven. Um, with uh, just through you to the to uh, Mr. Schlang, um, when we talk about the priorities that are would be that are being set, um, can you two two parts to the question? Um, when will the priorities be uh, or this plan be delivered to you? Council and cannot the motion itself, the intended purpose to create a committee, also be part of uh, the your priorities or the staff's priorities or council's priorities um, if passed? Through you, um, through you, Mayor, to Councillor Dillon. Yeah, we were trying to set some workshops up over the next two months. We put them in your schedules that you would have a chance to work <coughs> as a council to what your top priorities would be. I would imagine that post-secondary education or education be a key pillar of what you're trying to achieve. And then of course, then within that framework, you know, how are some ways we can, we can action everything that Councillor Santos had said. So I just was hoping for a couple months to work with all of you right. to see how right. we can really resource that and drive that forward. Right, so I think it, it might be helpful, um, you know, to include that if the motion was to pass, that it could be included in some of those discussions as well. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councillor Vicente. Um, I'm listening uh, to what the CAO stated with regards to um, committees sometimes um, perhaps slowing down the process. Um, that may be true, but uh, I, I am reminded of the work of the Blue Ribbon Panel and how key and instrumental it was in the previous term of council to bring interested parties out and we ended up with a Ryerson proposal which was the, the, one of the best stories that we had in the last term of council and so I, I don't think that establishing a Brampton Youth Council and Mentorship program or a committee uh, that's comprised of different stakeholders necessarily will interfere with the good work that staff is doing and I think that you can work together uh, collaboratively um, to move this important file forward. So uh, I would support this amendment. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Singh? Sure. So I just, I, I guess because there's so many uh, asking for some clarity. So we have the three, four, five, six, seven citizen based advisory committees. Then we have all of these committees that were suggested by staff come back now? Uh, through the motion? Through you, Question. Mr. through you, Mr. Mayor, yes, if these motions were to carry, then council is, so is all potentially three, establishing four, a number of five. new committees. So we're at five plus seven, so we're at 12. 
and then we're adding two more, just to be clear. So we're at 14, right? No, we're not adding taxi. We're not adding taxi. So we're at 13, right? We're at 13? I don't have the exact number, but yes, okay. more than we And they're all citizen-based advisory committees, just to be clear, right? Uh, okay. that, that is correct. They are uh, citizen-based advisory committees. Okay. Just wanted that clarity. All right, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> point uh, point taken. Um, <laughs> Councillor uh, Fortini. Thank you, through Mr. Mayor. Uh, just to, to my colleagues, uh, I understand we remove trying to remove some of these committees. When we come back with a report like the safety or the transit, can we have in that report what we that has been accomplished, what was the expense, how many staff were on it? So if it's good to continue it or just to to just drop the other committees. Through, through you, Mr. Mayor, um, frankly, that may be difficult to quantify um, because how do you quantify strategic frameworks that a committee puts together? Um, so that may be challenging. Certainly, you know, there's facts in terms of how many meetings were held, um, who was in attendance, but uh, trying to quantify some of the accomplishments, it's more subjective than, than actually objective, more qualitative. So can I be back on the board there? So, uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm back on the board. You're on the board? So yeah. uh, we sorry. have Councillor uh, Vicente first and then, uh, uh, actually no, you're uh, Sorry, I took my name okay. off, I just want to continue. Okay, Councillor Vicente. And I understand, uh, Mr. Mayor, but what our city manager, uh, Harry, is saying, all this time and all the staff, like I know on the safety we had like so much staff, we had the fire department, the police department, so if it's going to cause more problems for staff, maybe we could just hold on for that and a couple of committees and see, that's all. Okay, Council Vicente. So I, I just wanted to clarify that when I was speaking before, I was speaking to the Action Committee on Innovation and Post-Secondary Education, so, so there's no mistake. <laughs> Thank you. So the general sentiment I, I hear is that there's a lot of interest in where we want to devote our energy, but at the same time be mindful uh, uh, through the CAO of costs associated with this. And so when we do have that staff report, uh, a sense of where there may be costs that are prohibitive would be of interest to count. So I think you could take that general uh, direction. Uh, with no one else requesting to speak, uh, why don't we start with some of the motions. Uh, amendment number seven we'll deal with first, uh, and that was moved by Councillor Medeiros, uh, second by Councillor Bowman who has worse uh, penmanship than I do, which is impressive, um, that the clerk be directed to prepare an amendment to the appropriate governing bylaw regarding the composition of the downtown Brampton Business Improvement Area. Everyone's uh, seen a copy of that on the screen. Um, all in favor? Motion is carried. Amendment number six, Councillor Santos, seconded by uh, Councillor Vicente, establishing a committee of innovation and post-secondary education. All those in favor? The motion carries. Amendment number five, moved by Councillor Willens, seconded by Councillor Bowman, and that the Cycling Advisory Committee, in terms of reference, be amended to in instead meet on a bi-monthly basis. Just the one. Uh, all those in favor? Motion carries. Amendment number four, moved by Councillor uh, Santo, seconded by Councillor Singh, establishing a Brampton Youth Council and Mentorship Program. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, some of these motions, they're all in writing. Some of them are handwritten because they were just moved on the floor, and some of them were prepared ahead of time, and the clerk's office does not have them to project. Okay, so I'll, I'll read this motion out for those that don't have a copy. Of it. Um, whereas the average age in Brampton is amongst 36.5 years, whereas it's been expressed through reports and consultation, there are a few youth opportunities to engage with the city and voices of our young people are not regularly heard in the decision-making process, whereas the city of Brampton should play an active, proactive role, whereas the 2040 vision indicates the increased civic engagement and participation youth is paramount to decide on the city's future, that it be resolved the city staff be requested to report at the first meeting of council in January on the proposed terms of reference for establishing a Brampton Youth Council Mentorship Program. All those in favor? Motion carries. 
Uh, amendment number three, uh, moved by Councillor Williams, seconded by Councillor Dillon, that the CEO be directed to report back on an action plan regarding diversity, inclusion, and equity to include a possible creation of an advisory body and ongoing consultation with regard there be appropriate community with regard to the appropriate community groups. All those in favor? Okay, a question on this, Councillor Singh. Sure. Um, could you read the motion just one last time because we don't have it in front of us? Moved by Councillor Williams, seconded by uh, Councillor Dillon, that the CEO be directed to report back on an action plan regarding diversity, inclusion, and equity to include possible creation of an advisory body and ongoing consultation with regard there to with the appropriate community groups. So uh, just for clarification, what, what do we mean by consultation? Are we consulting the community or could you just clarify on what? It says the consultation is with appropriate community groups. So uh, to the movers, Councillor Dillon and, uh, and Councillor Williams, will it be even more specific on appropriate community groups? Yeah. own diversity um, mandates and are making strategic strategies to ensure that their organizations are following so we're gonna just to be community. just to be clear we're gonna consult if we need a committee or is that what what we're consulting about well is to um, just get a better clear understanding of what the direction is with diversity and inclusion within the, the organization okay yeah we're, yeah we're, and, and strategy. What, what I would take from this motion is asking staff to report back to us uh, that uh, where we can go with diversity, inclusion, equity, knowing that we have an interest in supporting the yeah. deputation that was made today. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, That's the way I understood it. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Okay. All those in favor? Motion carries. Amendment number two. Moved by Councillor Plushy, seconded by Councillor Vicente, that the terms of reference for the following committees be presented to Council on that the terms of reference for the following committees be presented to Council on September 12, 2018, for consideration for re-establishment. Uh, December 12th. Okay, uh, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Plushy misses September. Um, uh, for consideration for re-establishment, the Transit uh, Council of Chairs, the Brampton Community Safety Advisory Committee. Uh, Council Vicente. May I ask for a recorded vote on this motion, please? Okay. So, Mr. Mayor, uh, a member of council is entitled to ask for a recorded vote on any motion that's voted on, so a recorded vote has been requested. I will call the members in, to stand in favor, and then I will call the members to, to stand opposed, and then the... Um, Majority will prevail. All those in favor of this motion, please. Okay, I will read it uh, again. Moved by Councillor Plushy, seconded by Councillor uh, Vicente, that the terms of reference to the following committees be presented to Council on December 12, 2018, for consideration for re-establishment, the Transit Council of Chairs, the Brampton Community Safety Advisory Committee. All those in favor of the motion as read, please stand to be counted. Showing in favor is Councillor Santos, Councillor Vasante, Councillor Willens, Councillor Pileschi, Councillor Bowman, Mayor Brown, Councillor Medeiros, Councillor Williams, Councillor Fortini, Councillor Singh, and Councillor Dillon. Mr. Mayor, that motion carries unanimously 11 to 0. Okay. Uh, amendment number one, moved by Councillor Dillon, seconded by Councillor Fortini that notwithstanding the decision of Council at its meeting September 12, 2018, pursuant to the resolution C-239-2018, authorizing staff to recruit qualified citizens and make recommendations to Council for appointments. Actually, we have a copy of this on the screen. And we can have a recorded vote on this uh, motion as well. Electronic. So members of council will use electronic voting. So when I open the vote, you'll have uh, two buttons in front of you that will flash and you can pick yes or no. After all members have voted, we will display the results on the screen. Voting is now open. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, voting is ended. And the motion carries nine to two. Okay. Motion carries. Okay, now to the main motion. I'm moved by Councillor uh, 
Singh, second by Councillor Dillon. Everyone has a copy of this, we can have it added to the screen via its lengthy motion. I'm just going to wait for the recorder to go Now we have the main motion. See, no one uh, eager to speak to this again. As amended. As amended seven times. All those in favor? The motion carries. OK. Now we can deal with item six, public question period. This is where we invite members of the public to come forward to the podium and ask any questions. But any decision made by council at today's meeting, there is a 15 minute time limit for all questions and answers. If so, please come forward, state your name for the meeting record and your question, state your question succinctly related to one of council's decisions made at today's meeting. Um, I'm a resident of Ward 3. Can you press the button? No, you got it. Okay. So I'm a resident of Ward 3. Uh, I've noticed that you're bringing back working on the Inclusion and Equity Committee. There's a number of things that I don't know if it was that the city didn't work on and get it in time, but there have been a number of cases that show that's really needed. So the uh, open house for the downtown flood controls, commonly known as Riverwalk, the city held that on Diwali which is a holiday that both Hindus and Sikhs celebrate. Sikhs have something different, but it's on the same day. That's a third of the population right there. So holding it on that day shows that the city needs to take more care in when it is scheduling things. And it would be beneficial if the city says a calendar so it knows when to not hold days. Because I know some of the counselors have talked to them, and there was concern that this was not appropriately held on an appropriate day. And then, so the city has did a open house, they did a symposia for youth, which the city has decided to sign as 13 as to 18, even though you have the age friendly committee, which is 15 to 24, in a number of cases it's to 25, or with the Peel regions to 30. The open houses for the 24 division, there are a number held with seniors groups, but there was none targeted at youth. And there is a number also targeted at high schoolers. But so the 20, the people in their 20s is an important sorry, group sorry, to talk to. Just through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, this is so, question period. So if you can form okay, your so brief statement in the form of Okay, so it's what specifically is please? going to be for the youth committee? Will it be revisiting things? Things such as that, ensuring that there is proper engagement with youth and defining it because the city has at least three different definitions of youth. So simply getting the city on the same page of what definition it's using, because when you've got 13 to 18, 15 to 24, 18 to 30, those are very different numbers and just getting it defined and properly clarified would be beneficial for the city business. So what uh, age group were you thinking of? So through you, we are to salvation. Um, I think uh, the motion is calling for, not I think, the motion is calling for terms of reference to come back to council for a discussion. And I'd like to just highlight those concerns as part of, you know, the development of those terms of reference when it comes back to council for discussion. Yeah. Thank you. Any other, anyone else to come forward with a question? Uh, seeing none, we'll move on to item number seven. Uh, our next item of business is item seven, adoption of bylaws. I have a motion uh, by Councillor Dillon, seconded by Councillor Pileshi, that bylaws 229-2018 and 230 2018 before council at a special meeting of December 4th, 2018 be given the required number of readings taken as read and signed by the mayor and city clerk and with a corporate seal affixed. Oh, Councillor Santos to speak to that. Um, so through you, Mayor, to the clerk, does this have any impact on the motion that we brought forward earlier in section 4.1? 
through you, through you, Mr. Mayor, these two bylaws are specific to appointing uh, Councillor Santos as the additional regional councillor and Councillor Singh as the alternate regional councillor. Okay, great. So we, if there's no real impact in terms of what we're investigating in the motion that was brought forward in 4.1. Uh, no, through you, okay. Mr. Mayor. Council acts through bylaw, so this is just ratifying Council's decision in accordance with the Municipal Act. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All those in favor? Sorry, okay, Councilor Dillon? Yes, just to seven um, through you, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> the bylaw is ratified, um, sorry, the by this will pass today and get ratified on uh, the 12th. Is that correct? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, no. Council passes its bylaw well, today, today, and that bylaw is passed, and it will be provided to the Region Appeal Council mm -hmm. um, for its consideration at its inaugural meeting on Thursday. If, if what uh, Councillor Santos uh, has asked, there's some information that does come back uh, to this Council, this bylaw will have to be amended if through what uh, the, the ask is through our motion. Through, through you, Mr. Mayor, that's part of the report back in terms of the... Uh, the permissive uh, legal regime that would allow some of those options to be considered or the limitations that we have in legislation that would preclude those options from being considered. Thank you. And I'd add to that, Councillor Dillon, uh, given the fact it's been clearly uh, expressed as the wish of Brampton City Council, I think it's fair that Brampton Regional Councillors would want to express that wish at Regional Councillor and seek uh, that uh, whatever we can do to make that uh, achieved would um, um, we, we can be that voice on the regional council as well, given uh, what we've indicated. Absolutely. So, uh, no other speakers. Uh, the motion uh, is before us. All those in favor? The motion is carried. On to item number eight. Our next item of business is uh, uh, confirming bylaw. Uh, I have a motion. Uh, from Councillor Dillon, seconded by Councillor Santos to approve the confirming bylaw to confirm the proceedings and decisions from this meeting. The following bylaw before Council at a special meeting of December 4th, 2018, be given the required number of readings taken as read and signed by the Mayor and the City Clerk and the corporate seal affixed uh, thereto. 231 2018 to confirm the proceedings of the special council meeting December 4th, 2018. All those in favor? The motion carries. Our last item of business, item 9, adjournment. Uh, favorite part of the meeting for some. Thank you, members, for your respectful consideration decisions today. Our first uh, official meeting, aside from uh, last night's very short meeting, and I want to thank the staff for all their information and advice. Our next council meeting is December 12, 2018, at 9.30 a.m. I have a motion by Councillor Santos, seconded by Councillor Vicente, to adjourn today's meeting. I'm sure we don't have any debate on this. Uh, so all those uh, in favor? Motion's approved. Meeting is adjourned. There we go.